Guys, it's that time of the year we are going to be revisiting my championship predictions from the start of the season. Always enjoy looking back and seeing how many calls I got right, and let's face it, how many calls I got absolutely wrong. So what I've gone ahead and deemed a good and bad prediction for the sake of today's video, if I've been spot on with a place, that's a golden prediction, there's no getting better than that. Deemed a bad prediction if I am five or more places out on that team, and then I'm deeming a good prediction as four or less places out on that team so those are the parameters we're going to be working with for today's video without any further ado let's jump in starting out at the bottom of the table i have to say that rotherham have proven me wrong this season we've had it time and time again with rotherham coming up to this division and not being able to stick it and to be fair to me a few of the factors in and around rotherham before a ball had been kicked was looking a little bit troubling for them losing michael smith and michael heckway who have been massive players for them um, in their previous League One campaign, both to Sheffield Wednesday, I saw as a real hammer blow to that side. They had to be really savvy and sensible with their recruitment as well. Couldn't afford to spend above their means to stick it at this level, but they've been competitive right from the off. A positive start definitely helped them. I think that's been a problem that they've run into in seasons gone by and ended up finishing five places higher than I had then predicted. So fair play to the Millers, you've proven me wrong. Next up, and I got this prediction wrong as well, I had Birmingham to be relegated for too long I thought they'd been lingering in that spot between 17th and just above the relegation zone I really thought this might have been the year when Birmingham finally slipped into that bottom three uh, quite a few of the factors were going against Birmingham in the summer as well they messed about with the managerial situation for quite a while the ownership issue took precedent in the summer as well and probably what went against me a little bit with this prediction was the fact that um, I put that video out on the 24th and then just a few days later Later, they signed the likes of Chong, Bielik, uh, Hannibal came in on loan as well. So a lot of Birmingham's recruitment was done a little bit later on into the window and they were sort of playing catch up. But everything factored into this one. Birmingham have surprised me somewhat this season. Um, I really thought this might have been the year where they did struggle to stick it with how competitive I saw it being at the bottom. But another season in and around the lower mid-table region for Birmingham. Then to my first spot on prediction of the video, I did predict Reading to go down in 22nd place in the end. That's spot on for where they have finished. Now, do take this prediction with a pinch of salt because as much as I'd love to blow my own trumpet with this call, ultimately Reading only find themselves in that position in the table in reality because of that point deduction. Obviously, I didn't have that prior knowledge going into this one. But a lot of factors, like we mentioned before, uh, with the other teams who I had predicted to finish in the relegation zone were just going against Reading in the summer, uh, the restrictions that they were working under, the players who left in the summer as well um, wasn't massively on board with Paul Lintz coming into this season as well and all those factors combined I just saw it being a really tough season for Reading and while they did sort of flatter to deceive a little bit in the first half of the season that caught up with them in the second half of the year and ultimately ended in relegation In 21st place I did have Wigan, had a little bit more faith in Wigan to survive, that wasn't the case in the end, finishing three places lower than this rock bottom of the championship maybe i should have seen this one coming they were really slow to get any recruitment over the line but I trusted that there was enough quality within that squad and I thought they'd do a little bit more business perhaps towards the end of the window and Wigan had a fairly competitive start to the season quite a few draws that showed they could cut it in and around that level but they've just bounced around from so many different ideas and philosophies from Richardson to Torre to now under Maloney behind the scenes issues haven't helped them either I thought that coming up as the champions from League One and showing that quality last season that would have them in good stead for this season but ultimately that lack of resource and quality in the starting 11 I think is caught up with them in the end. After that and to Blackpool I did have them survive and it wasn't the case in the end finishing three places lower than I had them predicted. 23rd it was for Blackpool. Another side who have, who's bounced around from loads of different idea, ideas and philosophies this season. Blackpool were a bit of a tough call at the start of the season. I think the vast majority of people did expect a regression from last time when they were sort of comfortable mid-table under Neil Critchley but with him leaving 
Appleton coming in, who's not always been able to stick it in the championship at the past. I think that raised a lot of eyebrows. Uh, Josh Bowler leaving in that summer as well. But I still trusted that the quality in that Blackpool squad had a little bit more than the teams below them. It didn't transpire that way in the end. They tried to get a desperate bounce towards the end with Mick McCarthy, but that appointment was a disaster. And obviously then finishing the season with Dobby as well. So I really thought that Blackpool might have enough just to scrape survival, but it didn't happen that way. Now, all of my predictions have been fairly reasonable so far. While they've not all been spot on, they've at least been in the right region of the table. But with Sunderland, I am absolutely miles off. Now, I always say coming into every season, the toughest sides to predict are the ones coming up from League One and the ones coming down from the Premier League because momentum can be a funny thing that can definitely go both ways. And in the case of Sunderland, I mean, this season's been absolutely flawless for them. Uh, you know, make no bones about it, regardless of what happens in the playoffs it's been an absolutely fantastic rise considering the things that have gone against them in this season as well the fact of how young their squad is right now the brand of football that Mowbray's been able to deliver and build upon in the second half of the season the fact that they've been without uh, their main man Ross Stewart for the vast majority of this season as well yeah it's been a fantastic job and to get into the playoffs on the last day of the season with a thumping 3-0 win away at Deepdale I mean it was an amazing away crowd in at Deep Dell that day and it just shows that you know a lot of people I think had Sunderland lower mid table the vast majority of people did have them penned in to survive but it would have taken a bold shout to say they'll have soared up the league this quickly to make the playoffs in their first season don't think that's happened uh, from a league one team coming up to the championship since Brentford's promotion from league one all those years ago and then what do you know it I did get Huddersfield Town spot on I'm fairly happy with this prediction because Huddersfield were all over the place in other people's prediction videos. No one, myself included, quite knew where to place this squad. Uh, don't forget they were just coming off the back of a playoff final against Nottingham Forest. Um, you know That playoff finish last season had quite a lot of people off guard, but there was quality in this squad. What they had lost was their manager, key players. They brought in a rookie manager um, who a lot of people weren't convinced by, but I didn't have them penned as going down and the first sort of six months of the season really took me by surprise by just how poor this Huddersfield squad actually was. So it did take a Neil Warnock miracle in the final few months of the season for this prediction to be spot on. But I'm thankful for Warnock for delivering that as it means I've got another prediction spot on with Huddersfield in 18th. In 17th place, I've then got Hull, and I'm pretty happy with this prediction as well, you know, especially if you go back and watch that original uh, prediction video, because I said in that very video, I see it being a slow start to the season for Hull, but with them ending the campaign with a little bit more promise. The reason that was in my thinking was because it was such a squad overhaul in the summer that I couldn't see them sticking it straight away, and obviously a managerial change lately, and it looks like they now are on the, the right tracks with uh, Liam Rossini, but yeah, a lot of quality added to that squad in the summer, no doubt. A few people thought that may propel them into and around the top six. I didn't quite see that happening, but predicted them in 17th. They finished two places higher than that. Overall, I'm pretty happy with that shout. Then to 16th place, I have Blackburn. I am quite a way out on this one. While they didn't make the top six in the end, they were in and around that region of the table all season, finishing seventh. And I was nine places off with my shout for Blackburn. Uh, my thinking with Blackburn in the summer was Mowbray had just left, who had been a really safe pair of hands there over the recent few years. Uh, John Dal Thomason was coming in, who we had sort of no prior knowledge about, in, certainly in English football. And there was also the feeling that Brereton Diaz might leave towards the, end of, towards the end of the window as well. So a lot of things with Blackburn was just very much up in the air. It was a young squad and a new manager coming into the league. So played it quite safe with putting them lower mid-table but they pleasantly surprised me battling it in and around the top six all season but just fell short in the end because of that run they had at the end of the year I put more faith in Cardiff than I probably should have I really felt like they were on the process of building something with Steve Morrison I thought I saw some signs of encouragement from the previous year that they were going in the right direction it was a massive overhaul of players from their point of view but an overhaul which I felt 
I felt was definitely necessary at the time. I think they'd had um, you know, players on contracts previously who weren't just to find those sort of wages. It was a new young and hungry group who were sort of put together. But in the end, those building blocks didn't quite fall into place as smoothly as a few of us uh, thought they might. And it has been a pretty turgid season for them all around. Three different managers they've gone through this year, a few different ideas and philosophies. In the end, they've got themselves over the line just about but six places off on that prediction not the best call from me I had Stoke predicted to finish in 14th. I'm pretty happy with that prediction. Fairly spot on for where they finished. Just two places lower than that in the end. But as long as I'm getting it within sort of four places, I'm fairly happy. And within two, um, I certainly don't have any qualms about that sort of thing. Stoke, I've learnt my lesson from previous years. There's always the few people who have them maybe to go on a bit of a top six push because they certainly have the personnel and the potential to do that at the start of every season but I've learned from previous mistakes it was another bottom half finish for Stoke and while they did have patches of the season where it seemed like they had it there was just far too much inconsistency within that group over the full year. Next then to QPR in 7th, a bit all over the place QPR this season. Uh, my thinking coming into this one was there were some good young players and still are within that group. Uh, a manager in Michael Beale coming into the league who had a really quite stellar reputation actually and I was looking forward to seeing how he would take on this side who had been accustomed to Mark Warburton um, in recent years who was obviously a safe pair of hands there. What we got in the end was an absolutely bonkers season where they were up and around the top six under Beal had a drastic fall from Grace under Critchley and then Ainsworth just about managed to get them over the line in the end. But seven places off on QPR, not a great prediction, but I don't think anyone could have predicted what a bonkers year it was going to be for QPR and how many managerial changes they were actually going to go through. I had Bristol City slap bang in the middle of my prediction and I'm fairly happy with that call. They finished just two places lower than that in the end in 14th. But start of the season, felt like Nigel Pearson was slowly building something there. This has been his second full season in charge of the group there and just general steady progress. Last season in the championship, they finished 17th and I just felt like a little bit of an improvement on that was on the cards this time around. Didn't feel like they'd have enough quality to be challenging in and around the top six but also didn't have any relegation fears with Bristol City either and all things considered I think that's how their season has really panned out just comfortable mid-table for the vast majority of the year really. As a Preston fan, I'm pretty happy with this prediction that I've got our finish spot on. Uh, 11th, I had us penned for. In the end, we were just one place lower than this. But this region of the table um, ended up finishing so tight in the end that, you know, you could rearrange this order um, in any way, really. And I wouldn't be too mad at it. So, yeah, one place lower in the end. It felt like we were having... Steady signs of progression under Ryan Lowe. Um, you know, this being his first full season in charge came in partway through last season. And to be honest, it's been a little bit of a roller coaster ride for Preston fans this season from the consecutive goalless draws at the start of the year to the turmoil of the you know really patchy bit of form we had at the start of 2023 to then picking things up towards the end um, and getting us in and around the top six it's been a patchy year for us all things considered and feels like a big summer coming up with quite the rebuild that's needed within our squad. Millwall, now I could have been quite a way out on this. Going into the final championship game week, they were fifth in the table, but because of that collapse against Blackburn on the final day, I was actually pretty spot on. Uh, they went on to finish eighth, so I was just two places out with Millwall in my prediction in the end. Millwall, for quite a few seasons now under route, have been the nearly men of the championship where they've threatened to get into a top six place but they've just not been able to stick it for a lot of this season it seemed like they might have been able to put that to bed but yeah we all know what happened on the final day I thought coming into this season that they might just lack that little bit of quality uh, to get over the line obviously they had lost Jed Wallace um, my thinking coming into this one but replacing him brilliantly with Zian Fleming and in the end 10 two places higher than that not bad at that prediction Ninth place, I had Coventry. Now, I was quite positive on Coventry at the start of the season. What we've seen from them is a steady progression season upon season. The previous year, they'd finished 12th in the championship, and I thought they'd go a few better than that this time around and finish in ninth. But, yeah, they've taken me by surprise, especially in this second half of the season, going on to 
secure that spot in the top six. Can't wait to see them up against Burr and how that turns out. But regardless of what happens in the playoff for Coventry, this season has been an overall success. Reason I had them just short of the top six, and I did think they'd be in and around this pitch year, was because there wasn't that much being done in terms of incomings in the summer. It didn't seem like there was that much resources going into this squad to actually improve it. But who I had faith in was Mark Robbins, who's been one of the steadiest managers in the EFL in terms of season upon season improvements with his SAD and also some of their younger stars as well who are really coming into their prime in this Coventry side this season. So yeah, four places better off uh, than where I had them predicted. I'm still calling that a semi-decent prediction as it's in the right region of the table, but they've certainly gone one better than I had them pegged. Now Swansea have redeemed themselves with that recent unbeaten run towards the back end of the season and it's meant that my prediction of predicting them to finish in 8th place has actually turned out to be a fairly decent one because prior to that unbeaten run they were languishing in sort of lower mid-table which would have had this prediction of them in 8th way off but I really was taking Swansea seriously as top 6 contenders at the start of the season uh, like Coventry felt like under Russell Martin they were going in the right direction with a good manager and steady improvements there as well. Once again, like Coventry though, wasn't massive resources being put into this side and I thought that that may be the thing that holds them back in the end and a little bit of a topsy-turvy season for Coventry where they bounced in and out of form but their showing towards the end of this season certainly gives promise going into next year. Ah, oh, and I shouldn't have doubted loot, and I had them to just miss out on the top six. I was really debating putting them in there, but I thought in the end, the six who I've got above them just have a little bit more financial muscle. I thought that might, might come into play throughout the season, having a little bit of a bigger squad, more resources and things like that. But Luton have been fantastic, obviously. They have gone through quite a few changes this season that no one could have predicted with Nathan Jones up and then leaving to take the Southampton job and then how well they've actually done since that departure. Um, which even at the time, you know, I thought a few of us thought that, okay, this may be a little bit of a rocky patch here for Luton. But the formula that was already set under Nathan Jones, Rob Edwards took run with it and improved it and the third place finish in the end is nothing short of miraculous. Listen I was only four spots off with Luton at the end which I'm still claiming to be a semi-decent prediction but never in my wildest dreams did I have them that high in the championship. In sixth place, I then had Burnley. Now, let's not forget how much change this Burnley squad actually went through over the course of the summer. I predicted them to have a little bit of a slow start. I really thought it might have taken company a month, two, maybe even more than that to gel all of these new parts together. And I saw them having a strong end to the season and just sneaking into the top six. But this promotion push has been absolutely supercharged. And I think this speaks to the job that Vincent Company has done because while they have have spent money the rebuilding job at the start of the season was absolutely ginormous at Turf Moor and I think that people are quite quick to forget that if we include the youngsters that Burnley let go of in the summer Burnley let go of a total of 30 players in the summer transfer window and they had to go ahead and replace all of that quality and let's not forget the players that the Burnley were signing at the time the vast majority We'd, we just hadn't heard of, so we didn't know the quality that was really coming into this side. But companies knitted all of that together perfectly. They've been the outstanding side in the championship this season. And while I did have them pegged in for a top six finish, I was nowhere near with them uh, walking the league in the end and coming out in first spot. So not the best prediction from me there. Five places out on Burnley. West Brom were a tricky one to call at the start of the year. And I'm not saying this is that bad of a prediction because in my prediction video, I had the feeling coming into this year that Steve Bruce wasn't going to last that long and they would replace him with an adequate manager who would get them in and around the top six challenging. What I didn't see was just how bad they'd actually be under Steve Bruce in the first uh, month or so and then how much catch-up work they'd actually have to do from that point onwards. Had Corbrand been installed at the Hawthorns from the start of the season, I think they probably would have made the top six, if I'm honest, but they were playing catch-up all year just didn't quite have enough to cut it at the end with a few results which went against them. But four places out, not a million miles away. This is where we get interesting though because I distinctly remember my thinking at the start of the season was automatic promotion was between four teams for me. Sheffield United were one of those four teams and then the three who I had predicted to finish in and above them. I 
went back and forth with all of these predictions uh, for quite a few weeks before I put the video out, um, I remember rightly, and you know, with each day going by I sort of flipped them around a little bit, weighed up the pros and cons of each side, and in the end I landed on Sheffield United in fourth place, they went two better than that, and in for automatic promotion, but they were just coming off the back of the real playoff heartache with that semi-final loss to Nottingham Forest in the previous season on penalties, uh, Morgan Gibbs-White, who was a massive part of that side last season was no longer in this group either and it was all about who the players going to be that were going to step up and in the end it was really Illyman and I uh, who was that man. Recruitment, while there weren't loads of incomings at Sheffield United, I think they got the vast majority of those signings absolutely spot on to just add that extra bit of quality and get them over the line in the end in second place so just two places out on the blades but I did have them in for a playoff finish instead of automatic which was wrong in third place I then had Middlesbrough which I'm fairly happy with just one place out on this in the end they went on to finish in fourth place but it was fairly tight towards the end of the season between Middlesbrough and Luton there was even that part, portion of the season where it was Middlesbrough flirting with automatic promotion what I didn't see was how bad they were going to be under Chris Wilder you know take into consideration I made this prediction with the thought that Wilder's going to be in there all season. He's going to get them playing, which we'd seen signs of promise in the previous year with how well Wilder had done uh, with a run he took them on. But yeah, it was a disastrous start to the season. Despite that, there was always the quality within this Middlesbrough squad to be challenging up and around the top regions of the championship. And it really took Michael Carrick coming in to unlock that ability within this squad. And after a good January transfer as well, where they further added Added on to that squad uh, they went on to finish in fourth so one place out on Middlesbrough I'm really happy with that prediction but there are no good predictions from this point onwards because in second place I had Watford and I was a million miles away on this one in the end nine places out on Watford and uh, not even a top six finish for them in the end I really thought that coming down to the championship they retained uh, quite a few of the quality players who I expected them to lose in the end, you know, uh, João Pedro was still knocking about, Shmala Saar as well, and I thought regardless of the ownership issues and how they probably will bounce between different managers throughout the season, you know, they brought in Rob Edwards, but I don't think anyone was massively convinced that he'd last the whole season because of the trigger-happy nature of the owners in at Watford, I thought that they'd get in the manager if that was to go wrong who would then give them a little bit of a bounce as we saw last time they were in the championship when things started to go sideways with Ivic, Zisco came in and got them over the line I thought we'd be in for a similar sort of season this time around but that hiring and firing nature hasn't gone for Watford this season they rolled the dice with Bilic and that was a pretty unremarkable season part of a portion of their season and then Wilder came in and couldn't get them playing either so yeah quite a way out with Watford Watford in the end. I thought their quality would carry them over the line, but issues behind the scenes have just hampered them for most of the year. Then to finish off with my second worst prediction of the video, I had Norwich to win the championship. At the start of the season, I just looked at that squad. I saw the likes of Tim Krull, Max Ahrens, Grant Handley, Timu Puki. I just thought that the muscle memory would click into place after what was a bit of a disastrous season in the Premier League. But this Norwich side are masters of the championship. And having a capable manager, as I thought at the time, in Dean Smith as well, I thought they were in a good position to bounce back to the Premier League at the first time of asking. In the end, that's not transpired uh, that way, and I don't think that Norwich have ever really been in the automatic conversation after a ball was kicked. When automatic was out the window for Norwich, I think we all said that the bare minimum for that squad to achieve was the playoffs, but to not even make that and to finish in the bottom half of the table in the end is a gross underachievement for what this side is actually capable of. So, yeah, 13th place place to finish in the end for the side who I had to win the championship isn't a great call by me. But guys there we have it that will now wrap it up for today's video so an interesting prediction video two predictions bang on in the end both Reading and Huddersfield. A fair few clangers in there with my worst shouts being Norwich and Sunderland and double figures with them with how far I was off on their league positions but also a lot of the sides in and around the middle of the championship I was fairly close on as well so I'd like to hear from you how did you do with your predictions from the start of the season do let me know down below apart from that if you did go on to enjoy do leave a like and stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content and i'll see you all in the next one